G'day, I'm Paul. That's the Honda CRV. It's just had a facelift, a nip and tuck, all these funny names we give to cars that have had very slight cosmetic changes. So the CRV, if I'm honest, I sometimes forget about it. It's not always top of mind. So today we wanted to get behind the wheel of this refreshed version just to see whether it still stacks up against its competitors. This here is the VTIL. It's a couple of rungs down from the top of the CRV ladder and it's priced at just over $40,000. It competes with things like the Mazda CX-5, Toyota RAV4, Hyundai Tucson, you name it. There is a competitor in the midsize segment for it. Today we're going to do a detailed review of the refreshed Honda CRV. If you do want to skip ahead to other parts of this review, you can use the time codes up on the screen there. Or if you're on YouTube, just scroll down and use the chapters below. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit subscribe and press the bell icon so you can find out every single time we drive a cosmetically refreshed car. Let's talk exterior. You've got seven colors to choose from, and because they're so generous, they're all free of charge. So you can pick whichever one you want. So what has changed here with CRV? So you've had changes to this bumper section. You can see those sides are slightly different. There's changes to the wheels and also the grille. So it kind of stays very much the same, but is slightly refined. And I think the design here has actually stood the test of time. It doesn't actually look that old, it feels nice and fresh. You've got that big proud Honda badge just there. You have some safety equipment, radar sensor just here, front parking sensors hidden down the bottom. And I think they've really made a nice use of the chrome highlights and then these sort of brushed plastic elements and then a narrow number plate set up there. So it is a good looking car. What about over here at the headlights? You have LED daytime running lights. Unfortunately, this gets halogens, so not the best light if you're doing country driving or doing a lot of driving at night. If you do want to have a look at a comparison we did between halogen, LED, and laser headlights, you can click up here. So this is a basic setup. You've got to go up another rung on the ladder to get the full LED setup, and I think that looks slightly better and worth the investment if uh, you are doing a lot of night driving. Jump around to the side here. We've got 18-inch alloy wheels. Quite like this design, so you've got that reflective element on the outside and then a slightly darker element inside. Nice and chubby profile tyre there, so it should mean that the ride's pretty good. And they haven't gone overboard like they have in the Mazda CX-30 with wheel arch protectors. It's just modest here, kind of gives you the idea that this is an all-wheel drive car and you can do some off-roading even though you probably can't. Jump over here, you've got indicators built into that wing mirror. Now the wing mirror on the other side actually has a camera built into it. I'll show you why later on. A little bit more chrome down the bottom there and come around to the rear. This is where you'll find LED tail lights. Quite a nice design that sort of stretches all the way down from the top and around the side, kind of like the Volvo XC range. All-wheel drive badge on the rear to signify that this is indeed all-wheel drive plus VTEC Honda stuff. Uh, and then CRV badge on the side. Again, a really nice proportion at the rear. It doesn't look overly gargantuan and it just, I don't know, just looks nice, especially with that chrome strip just there. So we're inside the CRV. Let's start with what the key looks like. Here it is here. You have lock, unlock, and then a boot release. If you spin that around, you have the Honda symbol on the back. Now, this is a proximity sensing key. So you just keep that in your pocket, grab the door handle, and then you have a push button start over here. But it also has the ability to auto lock on walk away. So Pretty smart little key and nice and compact as well. Now, what about the styling? So Honda hasn't really changed a great deal inside the cabin, but to be honest, I don't think they need to. I think this still looks really nice. We've got this faux stitching along the top there. All the materials are fairly soft as well, and this screen is nicely presented. Everything is just nice and easy, and when we get to the storage, you'll understand the lengths they've gone to to actually give you places to store things. Now, what about the touch points? This sits nice and high really soft as well. Likewise on the door, so all of your touch points are really good. How soft are the touch points? Well, we've got our durometer here. We've tested the main surfaces of this car. If you want to see how it compares to other cars that we've tested, scroll down and have a look at the link in the description. Now, what about build quality? It's actually really solid. This is what I like about Honda's they feel like they're going to last the test of time, and this interior absolutely fits that bill as well. Everything is super solid. Moving on to infotainment, it's a seven inch display. Now let us know in the comments section below, do you guys prefer having detailed infotainment reviews or do you just want like a high level overview? Let me know because we are keen to get your feedback today. It'll just be a brief overview of this infotainment system and the features that it has. So seven inch display, it's a touch screen, and then you also have shortcut buttons on the side. In terms of audio, you have AM, an FM, there's no DAB plus digital radio, and then you can connect your phone over Bluetooth, or this comes with both 
both Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but keep in mind, both technologies require a cable. I'll show you what they look like. So this is Apple CarPlay, full screen integration, nice and sharp and very quick as well. It's like really high resolution. So I like the look of that. And this is what Android Auto looks like. Another full screen integration. We'll jump into Maps. That's nice. Oh no, hold on. Hello, there we go. That's nice and responsive once it wakes up. There's also a voice recognition system that you access on the steering wheel. This works both in the native system and it also works when you are paired to your smartphone mirroring. I'll show you what the native navigation looks like as well. Here it is here. So a little bit laggy, it could do with a bit more processing power, but you're really covered for all bases here. You can either plug your phone up or just use the in-house system. Now, ahead of the driver is a single display in the center and on either side, you have a gauge for the engine temperature and also the fuel. I love the way that's buried behind a slatted display. So it looks kind of 3D. Now in terms of the display ahead of the driver, you have a number of functions there. So yes, it acts as a digital speedo, you get your speedometer, but you can also transition between different menus, fuel economy, uh, cruise controls, navigation, and then a whole stack of other ones there, including this one, which I quite like. It is the all-wheel drive status, and we'll go into a little bit more detail on that once we hit the road. In addition to all of that, you have an eight-speaker sound system, and connectivity-wise, you've got Bluetooth, but you also have USB connectivity. One port is for your smartphone mirroring, the other port is for charging, but the good thing is, both of these, yes, they will charge, but because Japan, they have actually labeled the charging current. So one's one amp, one is one and a half amp. So useless information, but I think it's cool that they've put that there. And then inside this cubby, you have a 12 volt outlet as well. Let's move on to safety features. So you have autonomous emergency braking. You have radar cruise control with a self-steering function. You have a lane departure warning and a lane departure assistant. Now this self-steering function actually works okay. It's not amazing, but it keeps the car in the lane on freeways and it's fairly dependable. You can switch that off plus the lane keeping assistant very easily if you need to. And then a blind spot monitoring setup, but only on the passenger side. And the way that it works is through the screen. I'll show you what this looks like once we go for a drive, but you can activate it at any time and it shows you exactly what's happening out the left hand side of the car. And finally, you have a reverse view camera, front and rear parking sensors. Let's have a look at that camera and see exactly what it looks like. Yeah, look, the quality is pretty poor, actually. It's, it's quite hard to see what's going on there, especially at nighttime, but you can select different views. So you can have a wide angle view. You can also have a narrow focus view. This is especially useful if you're towing. It has a 1500 kilogram brake towing capacity, but that's where your tow bar is going to be. But yeah, look, the, the quality of that could be a little bit better. Let's move on to storage. And this is what I love about the CRV. Honda is super clever when it comes to storage. So phone can live pretty much anywhere. Bottle, you've got storage down here with teeth, and then in the door, you've got storage for a bottle, plus another bottle, plus odds and ends, plus this little slot for storing bits and pieces. But have a look at this. So center console sits nice and high, but then you crack it open. Look how deep this is. That completely disappears. And if you get sick of this thing, that can slide backwards, or you can get rid of it entirely. And then you have this huge storage area down the bottom. This moves too. That's then coupled with a decent size glove box. We can just fit odds and ends, including bottle if you need to. Now, this is a sunglass holder, but it also doubles as a mirror. So if you've got any noisy kids, you're able to keep an eye on them and figure out who started the fight using that. Moving on to comfort, you have dual zone automatic climate control with heated seats for the first row. And in terms of the seats themselves, leather, We've got nice bolstering. And the cool thing is up the front here, there's a nice little pad for your knee as well to keep you comfy while you're driving. Only the driver's seat is electrically adjustable with memory on the side. The steering wheel sits nicely in the hand and then all of this is very easy to reach, especially while you're on the move. Okay, second row. Look at this. There is heaps of room back here. I have acres of knee room. This chair is pretty much all the way back as well. So it's really impressive to see how much space is available. Lots of toe room there and headroom is pretty reasonable too. On top of that, you have rear air vents, plus have a look at this, two 2.5 amp charging ports. So it means that you can plug in stuff like iPads and it's going to charge fairly quickly through those two ports. Mat pockets here, We've got a center armrest with two cup holders. They fit those bottles in very easily. And then you have storage for bottles in the door plus odds and ends. Now, the interesting thing here is you've got ISOFIX on the two outboard seats, but you have top tether 
for each of the three seats. But the only downside is the second seat in the middle here is one of these DIY jobbies where you've got to assemble the seat belt yourself and then plug it in and do all that stuff. Um, it's a little bit annoying. Let's talk cargo space. Now, first up, power tailgate. You've got a button there to open and then one more to lock. Now, the good news with this boot is look how low that load floor is. It means you're not having to reef things over a high floor. Everything just comes in and you just drop it inside. In terms of space, you have a little over 500 litres as it stands right now. Under here, we have a full-size spare tyre. If you don't have the full-size spare in there, this is actually a dual-tiered floor, but you'll notice uh, when you do have the full-size spare, you can't actually access that second tier, which is fine. Then you've got storage off to the side, plus a couple of lights there as well, and also tie-downs off to the side and then up the front. Let's see how it goes with fitting our bags in. So suitcase, easy, and then laptop bag, easily in there as well. And I'll show you what it looks like when you drop the second row as well to reveal maximum space. You use these little handles on the side. Those seats then disappear elegantly out of the way. You can also then get rid of this cargo blind if you need to. Just like that. Now this could in theory live under the floor, but the problem is that uh, spare tyre is in the way, so you don't really have anywhere to put this, but that reveals a space of just over 1,000 litres. Okay, so we've just hit the road in the Honda CRV. Now, it's an interesting engine because it's a little smaller than a lot of the engines in this segment. It's a 1.5 litre turbocharged four cylinder petrol engine, makes 140 kilowatts of power and 240 newton metres of torque. And it may not sound like much, but keep in mind this doesn't actually weigh that much. This isn't some two ton SUV, it's actually significantly lighter. That means that it is quite responsive and it does well with the amount of power that it has. It's mated to a continuously variable transmission, so that means there aren't a set amount of gears. As you put the throttle in, you can see the gears rise and the turbocharger kicks in. It's actually quite responsive and it doesn't ever feel like it's lacking punch. Yes, as you put more people in the car, it will feel a little bit slower, but for the most part, it's actually quite an adequate engine for this size of car. So that gearbox is mated to an all-wheel drive system. It's on demand, but you do have a display here that actually shows you what's happening and where the torque's going. So you can see now it's all predominantly front wheel drive, but if I get stuck into it, it gives us a little bit of torque at the front and a little bit of torque at the rear. So look, this isn't for off-roading because it has a ground clearance of just over 200 millimeters, but this is going to be useful if you're doing a drive to the snow or perhaps a drive to a campsite or something like that where a front wheel drive is gonna struggle a little bit. A system like this will just help you with those basic situations. Let's talk about fuel economy. So 7.4 liters per 100 kilometers is the official claim. We'll just have a quick look here. Okay, so 8.5 liters per 100, which is pretty reasonable when you consider we've been doing a mix of city driving and highway driving. So one of the benefits of a smaller engine is that when it's not working hard, you're not using as much fuel. And I think that's pretty reasonable fuel economy before you get into things like hybrid. Obviously something like a RAV4 hybrid consumes a whole lot less, but it has some fairly complex hybrid running gear. This is just a standard turbocharged petrol engine. And I think it sits right in where it needs to be in terms of that fuel economy figure. So there isn't an official zero to 100 time, but we thought we'd stick it up against the stopwatch just to see how quick it is. So you don't have any drive modes per se, but you do have an economy button, brings up a little leaf there. And then you have a green bar on top of the tachometer. So how do you press the throttle? the less green it goes. Now, talking about handling really quickly, electrically assisted steering racks. So they've dialed in feel through this, so it doesn't actually feel overly numb or too light. You're actually getting quite a bit of feedback through that wheel. And then in terms of the handling, look, it's no sports car, but it holds its own, especially with this on-demand four-wheel drive system. It sticks to the road nicely. It has a little bit of body roll, but the throttle is responsive enough. And then you can dive down through these gears into an S mode and an L mode. So keep in mind, because it is a CVT, you don't actually have stepped gears like you would in a traditional gearbox. So in terms of the turning circle, unlike a lot of all-wheel drive vehicles that have massive turning circles, this measures in at 11 metres, which is actually pretty reasonable. You'll be able to do tight U-turns without having to resort to a three-point turn. Let's talk about the ride. Earlier, I mentioned the higher profile tyres should mean that this rides well. 
and they have absolutely nailed this. So they don't do local ride and handling tuning like some of the Koreans do, but in terms of the ride here, it's fantastic. It's nice and smooth. There isn't a great deal of noise coming in from those tires. It just hits bumps nicely. It's nice and soft and insulated. It really feels like you're just cruising along. And I think that's what Hondas have always been known for, especially vehicles like the Odyssey. I never sports cars, but they just felt nice and smooth, but they were still nice and capable when you needed them to be. Now, what about road noise? We're out on a coarse chip section of country road here, traveling at 100 k's an hour. It's reasonable. There is a little bit coming into the cabin, but it's not droney or overly intrusive. So you're gonna find it fairly quiet if you do have kids trying to sleep in the second row. Let's talk visibility. So these wing mirrors are massive. So you really see a lot down the side of the car there. There's no blind spot monitoring on this mirror, but on this one, when you put the indicator on, you get a takeover of the screen here that shows you everything. You can also put that on demand with just a click of this stalk. I think that is a really cool option. Yes, a blind spot monitor would be helpful, but this gives you a really good indication of where cars are in your blind spot and also what is in your blind spot that sometimes your blind spot monitor either picks up wrongly or doesn't pick up at all. So yeah, this is a good addition. And then looking out the front, I can easily see the front edges of the car as the bonnet slopes down and visibility out the rear is good as well. And remember as well, you've got front and rear parking sensors, which means parking Parking is fairly straightforward. Okay, so Honda CRV. You can kind of see why they haven't really changed this all that much. It's still a really impressive SUV. Yeah, the engine could do with just a touch more punch to keep up with the rest of the segment. But outside of that, it's got all the creature comforts. There is heaps of room inside. You can get it as a seven seat if you want. And it's just really pleasant to drive. It really doesn't put a foot wrong. So let me know in the comments section below. Have you bought a CRV? What's it like long term? And if you didn't buy this, what did you buy instead after test driving it? Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments section below. If you did enjoy this video make sure you share it hit the like button and also don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon so you can find out every single time we drive something new but until next time take it easy